So I think that the more you accept, the more you look around, the more you can uh, be flexible about uh, understanding what other people are doing, the more ideas, the more information you put in your own repertoire, um, and therefore the more choices uh, you will have and the more informed those choices will be. I think that's crucially important. Um, I would like to begin talking a little bit about this work because perhaps in doing so I can uh, uh, further um, uh, evolve the conversation that we've had up to now. Incidentally, right after, um, right after Yale, I started teaching and I taught at a lot of different places, at SUNY Purchase, at Yale University, at Silvermine College for a couple of years. I had my own school in southern France, in Provence, a wonderful little town called Lacoste with uh, 39 American students. I, taught at, uh, I started a little school in Millerton, New York, uh, called the Arts Work Forum. Uh, now I'm teaching at uh, um, New York Institute of Technology. And I started a school in New Mexico. And this was a strange thing because uh, actually, I, before I get into it, I just want to mention one more thing. I always felt that it was crucially uh, important to understand the impact of primitivism. Primitive is in primo, and as in first. And so I became uh, very, very interested in, uh, in the American Indian, uh, Southwest American Indian culture, uh, and many cultures that are native of this country uh, that go beyond the Southwest, that are, that are very different from one another. You can't put them all in the same boat. So that, you know, an Iroquois from this part of the world is totally different from an Eskimo, which is totally different from, say, a Seminole from Florida or a Pueblo Indian. They're as different as Asians are. You know, there's a difference between an Israeli and a Chinese or a Turk and, a, you know, a, a, an Afghan. Um, the studying of Native American culture uh, for which I also have to uh, thank um, uh, Elizabeth, my wife Elizabeth, for turning me on to because she was into it before I was um, in a large way, um, allowed me to go out there and to meet a lot of them and to spend a lot of time there. And I, and I worked on, 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 on some films for this company called uh, Primal Perfect, horrid name. Um, um, that touched me very deeply, and it, and it, and it, um, it, uh, it brought um, very um, seminal feelings that I had way deep inside me out to the surface and allowed me to understand who I was as a human being on Earth, more so than had I not had had that experience, let me put it that way. So that involvement, uh, brought on a whole bunch of artwork for about 10 years that dealt with uh, a lot of imagery that was connected to the American Indian. Every once in a while it pops up again in some of these things. So my work now is a marriage between a lot of those interests, you know, both my childhood experience in Italy, my experience here in the United States, a lot of traveling I did. Uh, I mentioned also that I used to uh, travel around um, uh, the world a lot because I used to race cars uh, and we used to do rallies. And the rallies um, allowed me to go all over North Africa, all over Asia, and all over Europe, and so on, and see a lot of things and meet a lot of people, and see things uh, going by with a lot of, through a lot of dust very fast. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's what happened. <laughs> so um, looking at this stuff, this is a painting I did on a, a few years ago. And uh, I wanted to experiment, because, because, because if you create, regardless of what medium you use. You can use film, uh, you can use painting, you can use sculpture, you can use writing, you can use music, whatever the hell you want to choose, you know, whatever you want to choose to use. In this particular case, it happens to be painting. Because when you, you know, again, when, when, you, uh, when you create, you have the option of addressing anything, not necessarily just what's in front of your eyes, but thoughts, feelings, smells, just anything at all that is part of the human condition, I torment my students constantly by telling them that art is an exploration in, into the human condition. It's an alphabet with which we explore the human condition. And the human condition is limitless in terms of variations of potential uh, explorations. So, in this case, I wanted to explore the spiritual, the physical, 
the intellectual and the metaphysical. You know, those four things, what does that mean visually? And so I try to create a world that, uh, um, that uh, goes into each one of those four things. Incidentally, the reason why th this is the shape is because um, when I work, I, I, I make a series of drawings. Mm, this is one of the few times that I approach the piece with something absolutely in mind that I literally illustrated, as in shedding light onto it, luster. Uh, but most of the time I do a drawing and then uh, after the drawing begins to happen and after um, the thing starts to sort of grow up and, 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 and be counted in my mind, I then figure out both what size does it want to be and uh, what shape does it want to be. And the shape becomes extremely important because I don't want to have to get stuck to the tyranny of the square or the rectangle if it doesn't need to be in a square and rectangle. So I chose this particular format, and you'll see why in a second.